everyone so so glad you could all be joining us today what a fantastic turnout thank you so much for joining us today on this movie version 2.1 the live release event uh i am joined by my very very talented co-host i should say first and foremost uh, we're going to give people a few minutes to hop in so no worries about you know being on the stream right away we're going to give it a couple of seconds if you want to go get a drink if you want to go get some breakfast if you want to go get a nightcap depending on where you are in the world if you're watching this later on youtube we just hope you go out we hope there's a lot of good info in here for you um, allow me to introduce these gentlemen uh, just above me on camera. I've made sure to put them up above me so I can't possibly mess up the camera left and right. <laughs> uh, I am joined by my good friend Miguel. How are you, sir? Hello, hello. I'm pretty good. Today is a nice weather, I would say, compared to the last few days, right, here in Canada. I'm finally back, so fun to be here again using the laser and using Ruby 2.1. I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, very, very important, though. We have a very special guest today. Alex, how are you, sir? Hello, and thank you, and a very warm welcome also from my side. Um, I think, actually, the weather is not so different here in Austria mm -hmm. <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm actually absolutely thrilled and um, looking forward um, to our today's session. Us, too. This is a really cool one. I, I should clear up right from the beginning. Technically, Ruby 2.1 has been launched since December. But with the holidays, with everything that's been going on, um, we didn't really get a chance to do a proper, you know, sort of launch event, something where we got to interact with you guys in the way that we, we would like to. And so, you know, this is one of uh, what will maybe be a couple or we'll see, but we really want to give you guys the chance to join us to celebrate 2.1. All the cool stuff that got added there, there are some very highly requested features that got added on in 2.1. One in particular that is a personal, personal favorite. Uh, you'll know it when it comes, you'll hear my little shout of excitement in the background as Alex shows you. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to spoil any of the cool stuff that Alex has coming up, but uh, Alex, I mean, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do with Trotex? Because I mean, uh, I will say, despite the fact that you are a very, very good presenter, I've never seen anyone show off Ruby as good as you do. Uh, there is kind of a special reason that we have you on this morning. <laughs> well, um... Yeah, I try, I, I try to do my best um, as good as I can. Um, I'm actually the uh, responsible product manager here at Trotec Austria um, at Headwater for Ruby. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly um, in contact with all our customers, having conversations with them on um, how Ruby can improve um, their daily work, um, how it can make them more productive, and then actually going into, into discussions with our R&D department and um, trying to introduce um, all of those um, functionalities um, that should then um, benefit every one of us in our daily work. I think that's a very good example. I will say, so, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to puff them up too hard. I, you know, I like to think I bring something to the stream, but uh, part of the reason I feel that we're so fortunate to have these two gentlemen with us is they are the two people I always go to if I need something explained to me from Ruby in a way that I know I'll understand. Miguel does so much of our training in Canada, and we're very fortunate to have him doing our training because Miguel has a way of, I think, uh, explaining stuff in Ruby like uh, in a way that is easy to wrap your head around regardless of what application you're doing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Miguel? Am I... <laughs> you're right, but it's an easy software to use. So there's That's also true. that, you know, like the software helps me to, to explain like M5 kind of thing, you know? Yes. Which is, is what we want. Yeah, it is what we want when we're teaching is to make you understand as easy as you can and do the work, you know, and Ruby does exactly that. So I love it. I agree. I've been advocating for it since the beta. So he has indeed. Miguel converted a few of us. In fact, there were a few of us who were old, you know, job control diehards and then Miguel wow. came through. <laughs> Miguel came through and he, he converted a lot of us in Canada, I have to say, but now I've become the advocate. And anytime I, uh, through the showroom here and i see somebody doing something on the laser I'm like, hey 
Is that in Ruby? <laughs> Show me the Ruby. Um, so let's see. What time is it? Oh, it's about five minutes. Um, how do we feel? Do we feel good? Do we maybe want to? Uh, oh, thank you, Lev. I should mention we have Lev on the on the back end here. I'm not sure if he'll be able to stay with us for the whole stream, but he has very kindly taken some time out of his very busy schedule to to join us and and produce from the back end. Hopefully, we can get him to say hi maybe at the end. But um, Alex, uh, are you feeling good about uh, maybe we could kick off the demo? Or how do you feel? Absolutely, I'm ready to go, Dom. Awesome. Let me pop up your screen. And uh, as a last little thing, I will say once again, a huge thank you to you guys all for joining us. If you have any questions as we go, you just throw them in the chat. Uh, Miguel and I are going to be watching the chat, trying to throw them to Alex whenever we can. But uh, don't worry about interrupting us. If we don't answer your question right away, we're just going to set it to the side, and we will definitely come back to as many as we can. We've got uh, we've got Alex for an hour, so we're gonna we're gonna pepper him with as many questions as possible. <laughs> Even longer if we need to. <laughs> oh, awesome. See, I told you these guys are the best. All right, let's go. All right. Um, well, thanks, Don. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for the chance um, to actually have this session today. I'm super pleased um, to having the honor to, to be here today um, and go through all our uh, really massively beneficial uh, improvements, I think, we could introduce with Ruby 2.1. Um, as Don already mentioned, um, it's actually already available since the 16th of December. Um, and we are doing um, all of our sessions, um, trainings and so on, um, and advertisement now, uh, because we wanted everybody to give some time also um, during Christmas season. Um, but now I'm thrilled to go through all um, our new improvements and new functionalities we meet um, to introduce to Ruby 2.1. So, um, as you are already all uh, Ruby experts, um, I'm having Ruby here um, installed on my computer. And the first thing I would like to show you is um, a really handy design functionality we introduced. This um, we call Photo tune, um, and the name might already um, indicate and suggest um, that there is actually more to come in the future about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the moment, I'm just going to drag and drop um, a photo here from my desktop, import it. And what we see now here is that the image has actually relatively low contrast, um, and the details are not coming out very well here. So we know when we would actually send this to the laser now, um, we would not get the best possible laser results. So and for this reason, we introduced a new functionality called PhotoTune. So to actually get there and to activate it, we just click on the image and we now get the pen here on the top right. And when we click this one, we actually get enhanced editing functionalities now for the photo. We see now in the background the tone curve um, of the picture lying in the back. Um, so how the different um, Gray, uh, grayscales are distributed over the image, and we could now just click um, and drag the red line um, on the image here and see how we can manipulate the image now and how we can modify it. So we can have several clicks um, to modify it or to show you the extreme points. We could actually even really just invert um, more or less all the colors to have a negative one, to have an inverted image as an example. So we really can do all kinds of manipulations on the picture now here. And we see now here already um, in, on the graph in the background um, that um, especially here at the beginning, um, there is relatively low, little information in there. So to actually enhance our image now for the laser processing, we just click it here and we just move it here. And we already see now immediately the difference um, in um, the image in the photo, um, how this process would now affect um, and benefit our laser engraving. So we see the relatively low contrast on the original image. And we now see a much better contrast on this one here, um, where we would definitely get more details and a much, much better photo engraving on our product. And all we need to do now is just apply it. And we have a massively improved photo now that's ready to go for the laser process. Wow. 
of course, still, we can still modify um, these images now as well. Um, and for that reason, uh, let me just um, quickly drag and drop um, another job, another design here to it. Um, just a, a, a tag mark, a dog mark uh, badge. And we just move that to the red layer in here. Uh, we already know that. Or with Control A, we can just select all the geometries in Ruby. And with Control C now, we copy everything and go back to our image. And with Control V now, we just enter it. And we can now use it um, for clipping our image. Uh, we already know that functionality from Ruby 2 uh, when it was introduced in July. So for that reason, let me just quickly reduce the size of our photo in the background a bit. And we now have our red um, vector contour here. And we just click that. And by hitting the C button on our keyboard, so just click the C button, we indicate Ruby now that our vector path should actually be used for clipping. So we have the vector path now selected, press C, and we also select the image and we use the intersection now. And the image is now cropped. And we could now actually use that to create some pretty amazing um, text for our couple here for the lovely family doe. We now actually have um, one of the geometries um, for our hole here in the background. So I just switched here on the um, layers card between the object order um, and the um, grouping per layer. And I can just now drag and drop um, an object on here and change the order of the object to have my hole here now again visible on the top. Um, so everything is now as I want it to be. And uh, I could now immediately send it to the laser. Another functionality um, we introduced um, is the margin tool. You already know the fit to design functionality um, that has been in Ruby since a while now that will immediately reduce the page size um, in the background to our actual size of all the objects. And now by hitting this button, we can actually add an additional margin to it. For first, I will actually show you um, how it was behaving before, um, just with zero, zero. So we now decreased everything to the objects. And by now hitting it again, we can now add an additional margin. In this case, just uh, for demonstration, five millimeters, fit to design. And we see now the margin added around our object, our design. Um, which now makes it super easy to just multiply on the prepare screen and place it for the laser operation um, without any need to change the distances um, between objects or so on. We save that now um, and use that for later. Another um, obviously um, heavily requested functionality um, we introduced to Ruby now is the stamp functionality. And for this one, I also prepared um, just some text before um, in a PDF, which I just drag and drop as well, um, enter in here. So just a typical um, name address um, of our, uh, Mr. Doe's company. Um, we want to engrave on a stamp now. And it's super easy to create the stamp in Ruby. Here on the design screen, we now have the generate stamp functionality, which we can now press. And we immediately get some options we can choose now. The first thing is to add an automatic cut line around our engraving. So we know that already from job control, our job control users, we can add a rectangular, a circular one, or an optimized one. Um, so if we add an optimized one, um, we will now see in a second how the cut line um, is then adjusted to the object's geometry. Here we could change the distance between um, our engraving objects and the cut line. In our case, one millimeter is good. And also, of course, because it is a stamp and it's not mirrored yet, we want it to mirror. 
And now we just generate, generate the stamp and we get a new design now that is now already mirrored and the automatic cut line is also added around it. And in the preview, we already see the negative. So how it's gonna look like when we send it to the laser later on. Wow. So all we wow. need to do now to actually have it um, processed as a stamp on the laser, we know that we create a job out of it. And we now have it placed here on our working area already. We see the laser crosshair in the back and we just multiply it a few times here, duplicate it just by pressing copy paste on the keyboard. And we tell Ruby now that these objects should actually be processed as a stamp. So we have the option here on top as well. Um, we click it and we now see that the color um, is also changing. It's not transparent anymore. So we know that already also from um, other jobs when something is not assigned properly, um, Ruby immediately shows us by the transparent color that it would not be processed by the laser as it is set at the moment. So we activate the stamp process now and we also get some additional functionalities here on the top now. So we can now also adjust the shoulders. In our case, medium is good. We just leave it as it. And also we having the possibility to turn um, the links on and off. So we want to have links that will hold our finished stamps then um, with the rest of the um, rubber plates. So it's not going to fall out and we can properly clean it afterwards. Alex? Alex? Yes? I can I ask you a, a really quick question? Um, the other versions of the, the cut line that you were talking about, so that is the optimized version. What other options are there in terms of setting up the automatic cut line around the stamp? Absolutely. Um, also, just, can I just say, if our headquarters isn't located in Laser Town, we really ought to move there because it seems very apropos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so just going here, generate the stamp again. So we know the rectangular one. We're just going to create one. So this is now then just really rectangular um, assigned around it. Or if we want to have a round one, a circular one, we just add circular and we have that now here. So we know the different stamp um, types uh, we can use. In our case, with the rectangular one, that would actually be a 4550 um, Trodot professional stamp um, that could then just easily be created. Or if we want to use a round hand stamp, for instance, we just add the round cutting line around it, the circular one. Very cool. Thank you, sir. And you're welcome. All we would need to do now um, before we actually um, can send it to the laser is we just um, select the proper material. Um, so in our case, um, I have a dedicated material for the 4540 um, laser stamp. And now uh, it would be ready to queue and to send to the laser and we could now execute it um, and just run it at the laser. I have so many questions. This is, yes. this is a lot. Uh, but first, I do have a question, specific question about the, um, the part that you're in right now, that you started uh, copy-paste side by side. But do we have or are we having a step and repeat function, right? So we can copy and paste in a, like a certain distance and repeat the same pacing, you know? Okay. We will actually see that in a second. Um, mm -hmm. So we do have. So, uh, so I need I need to ask you for one more moment to stay thrilled, <laughs> because this is something I'm really excited about, um, and I will just in a second show and explain you how to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, absolutely. But just one little thing um, before we go to that one um, is what has also been improved um, with the latest update is here on the job list. Um, we already know that. We now also see on the preview what type of jobs they are. So we see our standard um, jobs. And also when we have over here, for instance, we also see rotary jobs. And the preview, we immediately see that is different to the standard jobs. So we immediately now see as well um, what type of job it is actually is, which is even easier than to search through and identify 
what I'm actually currently looking for. And now, um, what Miguel just um, asked and requested, let me show you a new functionality that has been introduced as well. Just move the laser cross here around, um, which we call the array functionality. Yeah. So typically, when we add a job here, a design here um, to our laser job, we know we just um, either drag and drop or click it. And if we want to multiply them, we always have to press copy and paste and just add a few duplicates to it. But instead of doing so, and let me just quickly go back to the design screen and remove the margin around here. So we don't want to have the margin here now. So move that to zero again, save, and create a job out of it. So we know that uh, we can do it this way with copy paste and just add a few duplicates. But as Miguel just indicated, that's not always what we actually want. We really want to create an array of objects. And for this, here on the prepare screen on the design list, just double click on the design, not just a single click, but double click on it. And we now get this new oh. additional window here that will allow us to actually create such an array. So we can just easily tell Ruby how many duplicates it should create. So we just click that here and it will stay like this then. And then we have a few triggers here. We can now pull to actually make it really perfect. So we can use the top one to change the distance on X and the bottom one, the middle one to change the distance on Y. And this is something really very helpful now is the third one to change the position of every second line. So we can now really make it super properly fitting together and really create a tough, compact array um, that saves us a lot of processing time in the end, but also, of course, material. And just as an example, we could now tell Ruby, okay, we want to have two millimeters between um, the designs. And then let's make this to 26. And now we can even go here into negative, exactly minus seven, to still make it fit perfect. And we add this and we now have a really compact, more or less manually nested design array um, where compared to if we would just add one to another, um, I just simply did a uh, calculation before, it's actually saving up up to 10% of material and even saves us two minutes of processing time on something like this. So I think this is really something very, very helpful and useful um, and will increase our productivity in our daily work a lot. But there's actually even more to it because we can not just create it like this, we can even take some more things into consideration. Yeah? I just create a new job for it. And I will now move my laser crosshair to here, for instance, and with pressing F8 on the keyboard, we know that functionality already. I'm adding a marker to my plate here. And by entering some coordinates, I can actually place it really to a defined position. So in our case now, I just put it to 297 by 210, which is the size of an A4 sheet. And I can now use the array functionality again. And I can tell Ruby now where to actually position this array. And we see the different points here, the different corners here at the bottom. By clicking on one of them, we get the individual points here um, on our work area. And we see by browsing through, there is always a red dot appearing and hopping a bit. 
and by placing placing it to zero zero here we see now on the top left corner that the top left corner is selected and indicated by a red dot so we click that one here and we take the right bottom one and we see now the first one because this was the last one we added is actually the position of our marker so we select that one here and we can now tell ruby how many duplicates we want to have and ruby will now distribute it equally between those two points we just selected so this obviously is not just working between the extreme points we could even add another marker to here which would now be here and again at this design array here and we take for the top left one the first one we added and now the additional one and ruby would now create and design just and design array just between those two points we selected you changed my mind alex i have a new favorite feature forget the forget the job time estimation this is way cooler <laughs> that's so great Wait, i'll be honest i haven't i used ruby the 2.1 2.1 before when I was training someone, but I didn't install my laptop yet. So there are some features that I didn't use or try to use yet. And this just blew my mind because I asked about step and repeat and you have a whole new thing, you know, like an array of designs. And just a comment on that. I know that I'm gonna say Anshantanur so you guys know who he is, right? But Thomas Anshantanur, he, he said it right. Uh, well, I cannot say that in the stream, right? But this is amazing, <laughs> you know? And yep. the, the time that it takes, I mean, we as designers to fix a file, at least for, from the photograph, for instance, and to, to fix the tone curve and everything, to make a mask and, and put it to be engraved on, let's say a tag or something like that, right? Uh, an aluminum tag. It would take roughly five, 10 minutes to manually fix everything that you want. And this six seconds, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's just for sampling and to see how it's gonna look, you know, your first run, this is insane. And I love yep. it. I That's love everything too, about it. When you have this yep. like array feature, it's also because you can optimize so much of that part of the bed <clears> that you're using, you still have the rest of your bed here too that you can use for other jobs. I mean, like this, this using the array feature doesn't limit your ability to also do multiple jobs in the same bed you can like you're showing here this is maybe i think the coolest part is not just that it has the array function but then also you can sort of build an array within an array where you have the you know a specific section of your bed walled off for the array and then build out from there yeah john creating jigs this is so easy to create jigs now. sorry jigs, alex yeah right when yeah. you're creating jigs you can make the exact same array for whatever you're going to engrave after and whatever you're going to cut before and it's gonna look perfect, right? It's, it's not even gonna be like a thou. So this is insane. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. I absolutely totally agree. Um, you actually said a few interesting things now. Um, I would like to to add some comments. Um, um, Don, absolutely. Yeah, I think one of the biggest advantages of the array functionality is also that it's not like it's not like a dead array. Yeah, um, it's still alive more or less and you can still modify it yeah because it's really just a duplicate of the of the designs um that are that are placed in a position i can still grab um all of them and still modify them yeah oh. so i still have all the the freedom and poss possibilities um i need to do in here um and the other thing miguel said um you actually had a had a really good point in the beginning yeah um you are using already Ruby 2.1 um, since quite a while, and still there are some features you haven't used yourself yet. That's actually something we 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 want to improve in the future, yeah. Because I have to admit, yeah, it's not um, if you don't know, it's not clear that we have to double click on here. So we um, definitely are working on this as well um, to not have any like hidden features that would benefit all of us um, in our daily work. So we will definitely improve that as well. Um, and make things um, even more obvious um, how to use it and how to how to get the best results of it. Of it. And um, another thing this you is mentioned. This a good segue. Is, yeah. Sorry, please. Sorry, Alex. Can it, a good yeah. segue to show about knowledge base that we have it, right? Tons of people don't know about knowledge base. 
And if you want to see some articles that we did mostly at the beginning of Ruby when we, we launched it, Mm -hmm. But for small troubleshootings, like if you cannot log in, you have a great out login button or, you know, you need to reset your super admin password. You can all find there. If you click on the name Trotec, drops down to knowledge base. And once you go to that knowledge base, there are a few articles that will help you to troubleshoot minor issues. So it's nice for you to know that there is something like that in Ruby, you know? Absolutely. And, okay, and you can go ahead. Sorry absolutely. about that. No, really quick. I, I apologize too. I, I want to, <laughs> I want to let Alex keep going, but. Um, I just want to mention once again to chat that uh, we are collecting your questions. Don't worry. We have some really great stuff coming along, but we're going to kind of wait. We have a Q&A section set aside at the end. So please keep throwing in all these great questions. We're going to gather them up and then uh, we'll ask Alex at the end. And also, please um, don't stop um, requesting things that help you in your daily life um, because we take everything into consideration. And uh, I think we mentioned that actually during our first session already, um, really, uh, we need all of you um, to actually develop Ruby further and to really make it perfect for our daily work um, and make us our life easier. Um, another thing you you, you show the you, feedback you, function. The feedback function. Yeah, is also so they just know in where here it is. in the main menu. And ideas. you can just click on the ideas, um, and that offers actually this new formula where you can always request any idea, any improvement you would actually like to see um, in Ruby, anything that helps you in your daily work. And it's actually all directly coming to us, to the product team. Um, so for any 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 idea um, you are handing in, I'm immediately getting an email and we are reading through everything um, we will receive and um, then planning accordingly with the development team um, and try to introduce as much as possible then for each release again. I, I want to stress that too. Uh, we, we've said it a lot before, but it, you know we mean it very genuinely. That Ruby is developed kind of alongside our community in a big way. Mm -hmm. A lot of the and we're gonna we're gonna go to the timeline later in the stream, so you guys will see kind of what we have planned for this year, hopefully for next year and then beyond. But um, the the order in which things get developed out, particularly highly requested features, really depends on what we hear from from you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody, we're never going to know our customers as well as obviously our customers know our customers. So and we uh, are reading day, every feedback. A hundred percent. We are. Absolutely. That, that's why, to be honest, I mean, if you've been following the timeline since Ruby was released, you've seen stuff shift around specifically for that reason. Alex and his team, I mean, um, we are always watching to try and see what are the things that people are really um, asking for a lot. And what are the things that are super highly requested? The The... So Enchant uh, again mentioned it, the, the timer, um, the, the job timer. That was one that, you know, I think maybe in the beginning we didn't realize was as popular or as necessary as it was, but we saw it come in from requests and Alex and his team said like, okay, <laughs> we moved it up the ladder and here it is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, again, I don't want to steal Alex's thunder. I think, you know, uh, there's more cool stuff to come yet. <laughs> don't you worry. Definitely, definitely. So our, our roadmap, our um, backlog uh, to, for things to work on is definitely more than full. Um, but we are really glad about that, about that um, really heavily participation of all of our customers um, to help us on this and um, to work together here. Um, one thing you, you Don and Miguel, you actually mentioned as well, um, is working with chicks. Um, um, and I think this is also a really handy functionality that has been introduced now with Ruby. Um, 2.1 is we can actually create an offset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so let's assume we are using um, a, a tray um, in our laser now, and the tray has really um, is actually is actually um, leading us to an offset um, because um, the, the tray is is much bigger than than we can actually put in our laser, and we cannot use this left side now of the laser. And the tray actually allows us just to use that area of the laser here. As an example, we can now go to our settings and just remember the size now of the table. Yeah, it's the size of a speedy 400. Um, when we go to the settings now, we have now the option here for the offset functionality. And we can tell Ruby now, okay, my laser head is at the upper left corner of the tray. I click it we see it immediately takes over the position of it now. And when we save it now and go back to the prepare screen, we see now that the position of the working area is now where our laser crosshead was. 
And we see now that the total position has also been decreased because we now trade it on the left and on the top side an offset to tell Ruby really just use that area and everything else on the left and the top is a restricted area which should not be used for processing now. And we can just easily undo that, but just taking it, it to zero again. So no offset anymore, save it and going back. And we see now it's back again. And the crosshair is also again um, where it was standing before. Yes, Miguel. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I'm so curious, man. Uh, so Alex, this is also a type of fix to one problem that we have like a minor issue, which is the offset of the actual laser uh, zero zero, right? And in job control, you need a certain type of, uh, you need a tech basically to fix that for you. And here, if you have a zero zero off by like one millimeter, you can fix that quickly doing that and that's it, right? Your new bed is still there. While you wait for tech support, for instance, you can still use your machine with the precision that you're using before, correct? Uh, well, more or less, um, it's actually working a bit different to really um, aligning the virtual, the software zero zero and mm -hmm. the machine zero zero. Mm -hmm. um, that issue is actually not being addressed with this functionality. That's actually mm -hmm. on the roadmap and coming soon as well. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely in one direction, um, you are right. Um, it, it would actually address it, yeah. But it, yeah, if you see your laser head, for instance, in the top left corner of your new zero zero, you see in the bed where the laser actually is. So exactly. if, you, if you know where the physical zero zero is, you can move the laser head there and then go back to the settings, save it as the new software zero zero, and you can still use your machine uh, with the same precision as you were before while we wait for technical support to fix absolutely. the user. Absolutely. The only thing it would actually, as I showed, it would actually limit your, your table size, and we don't mm -hmm. want that because we want to have the full table size available. Absolutely. Um, so that's why I said it's not exactly it, but you are definitely right. Um, mm -hmm. it, it would definitely um, help in the meantime. But as I said, mm -hmm. um, the, the other functionality is on the way um, and um, coming soon as well. One more thing you, you, you already teased um, a few times now. Um, it's obviously the job time calculation, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I know everybody was waiting for this desperately. Um, so this um, has also been uh, introduced to Ruby um, now, and I think um, even much better than um, we used it. Uh, we, it used to be before. Um, here on the top left, now we have the button calculate job time, and we can just click that one. And have the job time calculated. Now we get this toast message here at the bottom where we see the time um, calculation up front. And this time is actually displayed at a few more points in Ruby now, um, which uh, I believe is really, really helpful. On the one hand, it's here um, indicated on the job list. So we see um, all the different job times on here already. But also when we go to the management screen, we know we can switch between our design list and the job list. And when we go to the job list, we really have all the calculations for all the jobs at one view. And this gives us a really good overview and it's making it super easy to just take the time from there and doing our quotation um, and easily sending out um, all the quotes to our customers. Can I, so um, you? I'm sorry, Alex, I'm so sorry to interrupt. The the times that are listed for each job, do they correspond also to the, the material you will have saved with the job? So if you have a, a favorite material that you save for this particular job, it just it, it, it yep. uh, it's not for like a default material, but it's for whatever material is tied to that particular job. Exactly. So as we know, um, with any job, um, we always assign the material as well to it. Um, and if we change the parameters in here, just for example, change it to 500 and calculate it again, we will now also see that the time is seen, it was before it was seven minutes something, and now it's um, half the DPI, so half the time, um, more or less. And this is then also changed accordingly, absolutely. Very cool, thank you, sir. Obviously also, um, we know um, when we are running a job, um, we also get the progress bar here at the laser symbol on the top. Um, so this time, um, the 
a gel collected job time is now also used for really accurate, um, accurately showing the, the processing time. And also when we go to the produce screen here, we also have our time here. Um, it's also used here and we also see the estimated time it, the job will take um, on the produce screen here as well. When looking at the produce screen now in general, um, we see that it has actually been redesigned in general. So we know that the queue, the job queue was actually located at the bottom before, and we often got the feedback. It was not always clear um, how to read the job queue. Is it to read from the left to the right or from the right to the left? Um, so we redesigned on the entire screen here and moved it to here. And it's now easily um, readable that all everything that's on the top, number one, is the one um, being processed next. If we would just click on the laser um, and stop, uh, start one after each other. Um, so that has been improved um, and introduced now. And also for all our customers using our latest machine, the Speedy 400 Run Ruby, with the touch display on the machine, you also now immediately see mm -hmm. that the queue on the laser is looking the same as the queue here on our main Ruby application. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Also, for all our customers um, that actually are using um, really the remote functionality where multiple users can um, collaborate and interact um, in Ruby, know that from time to time, um, the queue, the job queue was actually filled up with many different jobs. Um, especially schools, universities, you know, with, with thousands of students, um, it could happen that the queue is really filled up with a lot. Um, and it would take quite some time to delete all the jobs individually from here. So for that reason, um, we also added the functionality to remove all the jobs from the current queue. So we can click that and we get asked if we really want to remove all of them. And by clicking yes, we immediately empty the queue and would now be really freshly set up um, to work on whatever we want. Um, I, Alex, yes. Can, can, yes. can I ask you a question? Yeah. So this is um, about the Run and Ruby, for instance, functionality. I, I mm -hmm. finally had my chance to, to use Run and Ruby. And I don't know if it was uh, my lack of knowledge or if it's something that we did not um, Put there yet but for instance the run ruby since it's touch screen can we actually once we send the file in for production move where we want it to be engraved as of now in the run ruby mm -hmm. machine so mm -hmm. once it's in the the pad can we touch and bring the job for instance from the left top point to the middle let's say of the mm -hmm. machine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i understand yeah um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at the moment, right now, not. Um, also, mm -hmm. um, it was not with the update now uh, with Ruby mm -hmm. 2.1, but mm -hmm. we are well aware of the topic and we are working on it. Um, and we will definitely have that available soon as well. But mm -hmm. we definitely see, um, see um, the, the, the struggle there um, and, and we are working on it um, to improve that functionality as well. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if it was me or or mm -hmm. a Ruby, no, but no, definitely, definitely. But I do, we, I do like how it looks. It, it it's very similar to both. Uh, yeah. I had a, a couple more questions, but right now I actually forgot because I have so many questions, can man. I, you have no idea <laughs> how many I, questions I have. Maybe, maybe, maybe let me just continue with one more thing because maybe um, then all your you might actually forget all your questions because hopefully that will blow you away as as much as it does me <laughs> because i'm really really thrilled about that next thing I'm, i would like to show you um because you already know and we have just seen mm -hmm. it um that we have the possibility to import different file types and we are well aware of especially the pdf import and also um, we already know that we can directly import Illustrator files, so like this Ruby logo here as well. But now with Ruby 2.1, we also have the possibility to directly import Corel Draw files. And I have one here on my desktop as well. Um, I just drag and drop that as well. And we see it's being processed. And 
we can now directly import that into Ruby as well. And there's no more need to actually create a PDF um, beforehand or so. We can just directly use our Coral Draw files and import them to Ruby. That's huge. In fact, yes. that was exactly the question I wanted to ask because <laughs> thank you, be. thank you. <laughs> because actually, one of the new functions, and now I'm a spoiler, like I'm spoiling what Alex is gonna say in a few seconds. We also are importing DXF files, right? Absolutely, Absolutely. It's, it's it's just right here. Um, um, show you that as well. Also, the DXF file directly import into it, um, and I think what is very important is because we 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 got that uh, feedback as well um, that very often um, with other programs it happens that something like a circle here, for instance, you know, is actually not being imported or treated as a circle, but it would actually be then like four separate um, gradients, for instance, um, or four separate curves um, that just make a circle then in the end. But by clicking at this one here, we already see that it's really one full object um, and not four different um, curves or so. So it is really imported into Ruby as we want it to be. And this is something really important, uh, I think, because there is no more need then for um, additional manipulation or so up front. Um, it's really as we want it. Another question about that as well. So before, for you to open a file that was pre uh, previously on uh, AutoCAD, and if you wanted to print directly to Job Control, for instance, you needed to have a top-down view, uh, viewport, right? It had to be exactly. set up there. Exactly. Do you need that in Ruby, or do you just save the file and Ruby will automatically convert the vectors in the top-down view? How, how do you do that? Is there well, still a know, setup from it, now? It, 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 especially with DXF files, um, it really mm -hmm. depends on um, what um, software you're actually using to create mm -hmm. um, the different um, the, the, the DXF file. Mm -hmm. um, but in generally, um, you would actually not need to do this anymore. You can just import it. Um, all the tests we did, we have seen that um, always actually all the information was imported. Um, wow. it, actually, sometimes it happened that you know um, an additional. Uh, overlaying line maybe was created, but that's actually due to the original program. It was imported, but it's then all in Ruby, and you can always edit and manipulate it directly in Ruby. So all the information, um, all the details you actually need to work on is always in there. You go for it, Alex. We're, we're just going to keep interrupting yeah. you if you don't blaze okay, ahead. So. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, <it's I'm> a <laughs> Maybe something really exciting about the Coral Draw um, import functionality as well um, to add is because we always get the question then asked as well at some point is we actually did some tests um, because, you know, Coral Draw, there are quite a few versions out there um, already. And basically, from like Coral Draw 11 to Coral Draw 21 now, um, we did not see um, any major issues during the import. Um, only actually Coral Draw 12 um, caused some troubles from time to time with importing, but everything else um, really worked very well and very smoothly during the import. Obviously, um, our customers have a large, large, um, much, much larger base um, of different files. So whenever there is really something that's not importing as you would expect it to, please just send it in to us um, and we will then have a look and try to constantly improve that import functionality as well, just as we did it with all the different file formats like PDFs, SVGs and so on as well. Good. Um, that was really um, about all the functionalities um, with the clear aim to increase our productivity. I would also like to give you some more um, technical um, insights. We implemented renewals, um, I would say. Um, the first thing is um, because we often got the question, okay, what version of Ruby I'm actually using? Um, here at the main menu, we see at the bottom always now the Ruby version that is installed um, on our system as well. In my case, I'm actually already using an internal version. so. Surprise, surprise, there is also a new Spoiler. version of Ruby coming in the future. So I'm already having 2.2 here. <laughs> um, 
but we always see immediately what version of Ruby is installed. Another very important um, renewal is here via the settings menu. We now have an additional entry, uh, which is the service page. And when we click on here, we now actually go to the service menu. This is only available for our administrator, for the super administrators of Ruby. And what we can do now, and this was really important um, to have as well, because we always want to really have a consistent um, system is we can do and perform the firmware update now directly from here as well from Ruby. So we immediately see what firmware version on the laser is installed. And by clicking next, we can actually now trigger the firmware update. So we stop some background processes. It tells us now, okay, turn the laser device off, open the lid and turn the device back on. Afterwards, click next. Okay, we do this. And then we have the list with all the different firmware versions that are coming directly with the Ruby update. So we browse through the list and look for the right firmware version. In our case here, I'm running a Speedy 400 Flex and we can load the new firmware. And because I'm not um, actually physically connected to a laser machine now, right now, I'm not clicking on validate because it would um, break my laser simulation in the background. <laughs> but basically when we selected the right firmware, all we would need to do is validate and then we already see that Ruby is waiting to upload the latest firmware version to the laser machine. And then we would be ready to go and really have an up-to-date system with latest software and latest firmware. That's great. And that answers a few of the, the questions we got there in chat as well. That's awesome. I Just know. cancel the firmware update here. Yes and go back here. So basically that was um, all the improvements um, that have been made for all our Ruby users. Now, last but not least, I would just quickly show you um, two things that have been improved and uh, added, especially for our run on Ruby users um, with the Speedy 400. I actually imported some screenshots from here because filming um, a display is always um, hard to see actually something on the display. So just created the screenshot um, of our touch display on the laser. And the first thing we introduced um, is it's now possible to also put the laser directly from the touch display in standby mode to turn the exhaust on and off, but also to turn the air yeah, assist on and off. So we can now easily adjust the settings there. Also, when looking at the top, we see now that we're having the globe here as well, indicating English. So we can now also change the language directly from the display here. And there have been made many improvements, especially to the network settings. So the network settings screen, we now have really all the information on the network adapters we need to really make sure that the machines are properly integrated in our network systems. So we have all the IP addresses, DNS, and so on. And we already see here, we also have an edit functionality. So in case we need to manually adjust it, we now have that option and possibility as well to really change um, the network settings um, to make sure we can properly communicate with our intelligent laser machine in our local networks. Beside that, um, Miguel already mentioned um, before, um, there are numerous um, improvements in general in Ruby, and all of them are available and um, directly accessible via Ruby help. We've been here already before. We always have the release notes section. So there's also the release notes for Ruby 2.1 with all the improvements listed up here. Um, and in general, um, the setup, the overall setup has been improved a lot, um, also numerous improvements to how files have been imported. Um, also the one or other fix to the vector clipping. So the um, clipping functionality I showed in the beginning with the image because sometimes um, geometries got broken by this now. So this has been addressed as well. And also 
some combination with laser devices with pausing and, and resuming behavior that has been addressed as well next to other numerous improvements which are always available directly here from the release notes well and Amazing. with that <laughs> i would like to hand over to to don and miguel and see if there are more questions oh there are there, there are, are plenty <laughs> um really quickly would you like uh, would you like me to just touch on the uh the roadmap that's coming up alex or would you like to come back to that uh later in the stream what would you prefer well, absolutely, we can do that. Um, let me just jump here to StreamYard and you show the roadmap because maybe that will actually absolutely. answer the one or other question as well. Yeah, I've got it right here. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes, mm -hmm. we can see. Perfect. So like we mentioned in the in the beginning, um, this roadmap is kind of broken down in terms of, you know, for this year, next year and for, you know, down the road. None of this, of course, mm -hmm. is is uh, promised. It's all, you know, these are the order that we would like to see them happen. But uh, I say that because, again, anything you see on here, if we hear enough feedback from our customers, like absolutely need to have, you know, uh, a way of optimizing cutting jobs automatically or, you know, one of the other things uh, we will do our best to try and, you know, bump things around and, and move them so that you get what it is that you request first and foremost. But, um, you know, in terms of the ones that are scheduled for this year, Alex, what are the things that, what are the really jump out features? What are the ones that people might be really excited about? Well, I think one of the most exciting things, um, aspects is definitely the first um, point from today's, uh, to this year's um, column um, is um, to uh, create um, and position um, jobs directly on the workpiece. So there's a new product um, coming um, that will um, <laughs> benefit a lot from our Ruby improvements. Uh, what was his name? Um, uh, let me let me let me grab him. The, exactly. the person who threw the comment in chat. Yeah, Ashford uh, Lasers Maker Channel. You asked you asked that question <laughs> ten times. So there's your answer. Um, we haven't we haven't revealed that yet. So you just yeah. you just use your imagination. Um, you're right, though. That is very, very cool. Um, another one, Alex, I wanted to ask you about Ruby for the SPs, Ruby for the large format lasers. Absolutely. Um, so we definitely see um, that um, those lasers would particularly benefit um, from Ruby, especially as Ruby is handling, you know, vectors um, really, really good. Um, and there's um, really um, most of the jobs are really cutting jobs with a lot of vectors in there so they would benefit a lot from it um, but also not just the sp series obviously um, at some point um, we want to have and this is actually stated then for 23 as well uh, really having all trotic laser machines supported with ruby so we're constantly working on that topic um, in general so also looking at rq series for this year um, but then definitely more more things really for for our existing customers, for the existing Ruby users. So we are constantly working um, on improving the different file import functionalities. So making that robust, uh, but even more file types. Um, and then especially um, more design functionalities um, in, in particular here. And um, one to name is really multi-line text. We are looking at this topic as well. Um, so as we know, we're currently we are limited to single line text, so we definitely want to have multi-line text um, as well integrated. And also uh, um, the overall topic of, of serialization, optimization, um, and working with dynamic data is a big topic for us, um, which we want to have um, with Ruby as soon as possible as well. Yes, that, that was one we saw in the chat a little bit, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, definitely um the, the dynamic data the serialization just thinking about what you could do with that array function and the ability to use dynamic data so you could do an array filled with 30 tags and then populate individual text on each one i mean it would be unreal um yeah. can i just say too if if ever you were um wondering about the level of of drive and the level of aspiration that alex's team has i'll, I'll direct you to some of the things in the later column things like solve problems before they happen and <laughs> see laser <laughs> results in advance. I mean, we are really, <laughs> we're really shooting for the, the stars here, you guys. We really want to be sure that this is as good as it possibly can be. Um, 
a couple really kind of interesting ones for me personally in the the later category. And I just want to get uh, you know customers' feedback. I also want to you know maybe a little bit of customer feedback that might get bumped up the the ladder. Um, one of the the things I think is so exciting is collaborate with customers in Ruby. So being able mm -hmm. to collaborate directly between ourselves and with customers. And I don't expect you to to flesh these out necessarily, Alex. But I just I think it's you know interesting to pull up. Um, ordering consumables directly from Ruby, the run on Ruby machines, I assume. And then also Wait, what? Um, being able to connect and share with the laser community. I mean, all of that stuff sounds exciting, but I don't even have the details yet, but I love the sort of Wait, direction, that... the community geared direction. Yeah, that's real. Genuinely. Where did you, where did you read that? <laughs> so that, no, that, that sounds... <laughs> this, so this is real. I've, I've heard about this since uh, when they very first started talking about Ruby. This is one of the things that really sold me on it. Cause I think again, because yeah. the run on Ruby machines, um, are connected to the, I mean, connected online, right? Um, you have access to a material website at some point, you have access to, you know, other customers potentially. I don't know, you know, I don't know if even Alex knows what this would look like yet, but I just want to get people's heads percolating about, you know, what a cool thing this could be to be able to, yeah. you know, share yeah. designs, share feedback, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, that's one of the, the things um, um, we need to differentiate, you know, Ruby is a web-based software, um, so that's basically the type of technology we are using. Um, but as you know, um, Ruby is really running on the local computer system, so nothing mm -hmm. running in the cloud or so. Um, it's really about the technology we are using. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, when looking in the future, and um, that's also the idea of really having an intelligent laser machine um, that makes our life easier and that thinks actually for us, um, we would definitely explore some of the um, benefits this type of technology would give us, and we want definitely um, to connect um, to connect people together. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, and you already named the, the things in the later phase, um, and we are always happy to receive um, feedback and ideas on these on these mm -hmm. things as well. Um, and to actually, I mean, honestly, that's not that's not that's not ours. That's not Trotex roadmap. That's really your roadmap where you mm -hmm. want us to to head in the future and where 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 we are going um mm -hmm. together Absolutely. and i think most uh most important we are walk walking the walk right we yes. had two major updates in the past what six months something like that mm -hmm. I mean, right. so. six eight months and all of them solved a problem or multiple problems and came with like features that people wanted and they asked us for it right so it's not just, yeah, give us feedback and we'll see when we're going to do that. No, every single update so far have been like that. And, yes. you know, it shows you consistency that we are listening and we are doing what we're, we're promising. Absolutely. Yeah, July, and December, exactly. I, I wanted to, just before I close this, I just wanted to point out to uh, everyone watching the stream now or in the future, if you ever do want to see this roadmap, I'm just on our... Not in anything proprietary. This is just uh, trotechlaser.com, the new trotechlaser.com. We would love uh, if you guys would, would visit it and let us know what you think. Uh, if you just come to the homepage here, trotechlaser.com, if you go up to products, there's the uh, Ruby laser software here in the corner. And then when you click it, the page that it takes you to is the uh, the Ruby page. And once you get to the Ruby page, if you scroll down, you'll see that, uh, you'll see that roadmap. It's about halfway down here. There's a lot of other good stuff, just videos. Good option, but there you are. So as this, because it's a, um, because it's a dynamic thing, because it does shift and change as the year goes on, and as we say, as we get feedback from 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 you, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to let you all know where you could find that, so that you can always keep an eye on it, and uh, you know, we hope you keep the, the feedback coming in. Um, Q and A, Q and A, Q and A. Yes, exactly. Let's get to some. Let's get some Q and A. Miguel, did you want to? Did you want to kick it off? I'm going to start pulling some of these chat questions, and did you have a Ooh. question you want to throw to Alex to to start? I have one prepared here that I got from one of our sales guys uh, yesterday. I've got to pull it out, but um, okay, go ahead. you already covered off the, the multi-line text. I've got to say, Mike Clark, or one of our sales guys, if you guys know Mike Clark, somewhere he is very excited. That's been one of his big ones, and he's going to be so happy to hear that. Um, I have, let me see here. Can I just say thanks again to everybody who is watching, by the way? Uh, we really appreciate all the great questions. Um, if you do have any questions, you're watching this on YouTube later, please leave them in the YouTube comments. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, fire so, away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
if you don't mind, Alex, can can we answer things together? Like simple stuff I can answer, and then yeah, when, yeah, when absolutely. it's a, absolutely. It's a more ahead, complicated please. and in-depth you answer, a, I'm going to give it to you. You take okay? a drink of water. So it's, you've been talking for like 40 minutes. You go ahead. <laughs> Let me go and I do some of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how do I get Ruby upgraded to 2.1? There are two ways. One, you, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm wrong, please, Alex, correct me. Uh, you open Ruby for the first time in administrator more mode and you will have on the tray right windows tray the thing near the clock if you right click the ruby icon you will have uh, search for updates if you, you're not updated to the latest um, version of ruby if you are i don't think there will be a prompt there am i wrong or, or well, will the, uh, the, the update mechanism actually changed with ruby 2 uh, in july um so the, mm. this option that uh, while the tray app is not there anymore because you just directly get in ruby the notification um that the update mm. is there and yep. just in uh with this notification you just click it um and um then the update is performing and don't mm. worry um, and if you miss the notification it will actually one appear way again the second the way is down directly from the exactly um just really yeah. quickly and the second um, way is download directly from the website right you can download ruby from the website the newest version and you just install on top of it and will update automatically so we have two ways there both very easy um you won't have any problem updating ruby the second question this one is for you um personally i've trained some people with windows 11 and ruby worked completely fine i think they kind of have the same shell the windows 10 windows 11 so they will probably work the same manner but uh darren from ashford lasers he was asking why is not working windows 11 do we have any types of problems or, or compatibility issues with windows 11 right now or is it's going at least as smooth as it can be from the transaction from windows 10 and windows 11. Well, in general, it works with Windows 11. I'm actually having mm -hmm. currently two cases um, where we had some issues with the with the with the um, upgrade to Windows 11, and we're currently looking at this um, and trying to to resolve this topic there. But in general, um, it's compatible with Windows 11. Mm -hmm. uh, and um... JS here. <laughs> what is <Yeah>. Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> it's the um... most amazing laser software out there. That's yes. the answer. That's exactly right. Um, forgive me, I was going to grab one. Um, so TAC templates mentioned, and I think you covered this off in your demonstration there, Alex. Can you adjust shoulder settings for stamps? Yes, you can. It's right in the stamp uh, functionality. Can I ask you a quick question? When you activate the stamp functionality on your, your bed for a particular uh, job, are you then able to do other jobs in the same bed that are not stamps? Or is it is it sort of all stamps or no stamps kind of thing? Well, it, it will actually just um, perform the... The, the stamp jobs then on it and the other ones would be inactivated. So you would actually see that they become transparent then um, gotcha. in the end um, and it would just process the stamps. Um, but in general, um, we are already working also on, on, on in general on the stamp process and um, to make that even better. Um, so we will definitely see some improvements there as well in the future. Awesome. Uh, we had a question from Tommy asking if moving the laser, I assume is the laser uh, dot in the production area, it moves the laser on the machine, yes. And it's been there since the beta. So <clears throat> not new, but yeah, you can click drag and the laser will move it if it's connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, really quick yeah. one, uh, I had one above here from, I believe it was from uh, Corey. Yes, from Corey. Uh, so they were asking about where can you find tutorials for learning Ruby from scratch? Um, I posted a link in chat to our, our YouTube, uh, you know, webinars and tutorials um, playlist. But if you search for um, Ruby on YouTube, just in general, Trotec Ruby, um, I mean, Trotec Canada has done some good stuff for Ruby. Miguel in particular has put together some, see, I always, man, um, <laughs> Miguel's done some really great videos for us. But I would, uh, I would really suggest just do a quick search um, on YouTube in general for Trotec Ruby. Uh, all of the different branches across the world. I know for a fact in particular, you know, obviously our HQ in Austria, uh, the guys in the US with Laser Dave. I mean, there are a bunch who've done some great, great coverage of Ruby. I would I would encourage you to, to just dive in in YouTube and, and check some of that stuff out. Um, there's really good stuff out there. But if you mm -hmm. want something more uh, streamlined, what I would mm -hmm. tell you to watch would be first the launch Ruby webinar with Alex and and alex i believe so right both alex mm -hmm. were there alex I, I, alex, yeah 
Alex and Alex. So watch that <laughs> webinar. Uh, they go really in depth on, on the usability of Ruby. So the launch webinar is roughly a year and in, in three months old, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we did a webinar for the the first update for Ruby, I think so, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. more like use, uh, usability in the design stages and things like that. So it's kind of a Ruby tutorial that I made. It was roughly one hour as well. And then this, right? This came with tons of information from Alex again. So it will be in our YouTube channel and you can watch it later anytime you want. Yep, absolutely. Um, another really quick uh, question here. Um, Brian asks, uh, sort of in a similar vein, a good place to learn about all the features and details uh, is there a GitHub. Um, so I feel like Alex, you were sort of speaking to uh, when you visit the Ruby help that it has the list of all the features that came in the most recent update, that that would probably be the easiest way to kind of keep track of what the, the biggest updates and things in the most recent patch would be. Well, yes, um, I would think so. All the different, um, you know, functionalities I actually described there as well. Um, and we are constantly working um, on the content of rubyhelp.com um, as well. Um, so also short little tutorials on how to use different functionalities and so on. Um, so we are working on this topic as well to have it more interactive. But basically, the, you can actually search for anything um, on rubyhelp.com um, and it will actually um, provide you um, hopefully all the necessary information and if you are missing anything, just shoot us a message, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question that will answer some questions. Is is Ruby really needed? Uh, actually, it's the other way around. Is a network connection really needed to use Ruby? Internet connection, not network. Sorry. Is mm -hmm. it? After you activate it, is it? No, that's exactly the point. Um, we need um, the internet connection for the activation um, because that's it's it. then also um, downloading um, machine configuration and so on, uh, what it needs. Um, but after that, you don't need any internet connection at all. It's all running locally on the system. Exactly. So if you're having some problems and you think it's because it's not connecting to the internet, it is not. It's probably something with the, the uh, installation or something that happened with the graying out of the button that you normally clearing the cache of the browser would resolve. Right. So take a look at Ruby help, but all of the Ruby software is available offline once you activate. So you yep. can log in still and search for it. And if you cannot log in on Ruby, you will have at least the Ruby help page in your URL, right? Saved. And you can uh, access that without logging in into Ruby to fix your issues. You don't need to be logged in to see the Ruby help, right? I saw exactly. some questions like that, and I wanted to, to yep. clear it out because a lot well, of people think one. you need to be in the internet all the time. You don't. Just the first time you log into Ruby, you need to be in the internet. Mm -hmm. and in kind of by, a... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And by the way, are we changing anything about the activation? Can you give like a, a sneak peek on that? <laughs> um, yes, definitely. Um, so that's also that's also on the roadmap on our agenda. Um, in general, this um, how to activate um, Ruby process will be changed in the future, um, particularly to have the option to do really an offline activation as well. Um, mm -hmm. But for all our future customers as well, um, we want to have a kind of a trial version then as well, um, where everybody can just really play around um, with Ruby. Um, so we are working on this topic, and this will also come. Um, there we in go. Kind of a, in kind of a similar space, um, we had a couple questions like this one from Memories Made that I think is a good question uh, about you know whether job control and Ruby can be run at the same time. Just you know, and I think you make a really good point that while you're learning to use Ruby, sometimes it's nice to be able to fall back on job control. You know, go back and forth between the one you know and and uh, you know, kind of getting more familiar with Ruby. Um, uh, I mean, Miguel, what would you advise a customer who kind of asks you that question? What would be the what would be the go-to? I know that, I mean, technically they can't run simultaneously, but that's exactly what I would say. Like, yeah, you can open both at the same time, but in the Ruby icon and the tray, if you right-click, you can choose a laser mode. I don't know if you can choose a laser mode inside Ruby. Can you? No, right? Only on the tray. No, it's it's via that application. Maybe. Let me just quickly, I can actually show that here. Yeah. Let's Get out the roadmap. Screen. New thing to add. <laughs> so, 
This is we the tree icon, the guys. Here. Yeah. And right click on here. The tray appears at the bottom, and by right clicking it, we get the laser mode, and then we can just easily switch between Ruby and Job Control because yes. only one of the programs can always communicate with the laser, and we need to tell the system, the computer, which is now allowed um, to, to send um, commands to the laser. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that, it. Yeah, that's it. Let me see. Mm. Um, we did have uh, a couple questions about file imports, if that's okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. We had one question here from uh, from Doug about whether you can import CDR files in case you missed it. Yes, absolutely you can. Um, and another one similarly from Janice here about uh, other types of SVG files. So Affinity, Silhouette, and then uh, I know we had one about CDL as well, which I believe is a CAD file, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. this type of CAD file. Um, Right now, Alex, is it is it sort of limited to? I shouldn't say limited. It's pretty exciting, but is it uh, principally the the CDRs and AIs for the moment, or I mean, in in addition to the stuff we already had, obviously. Well, um, you know, uh, SVG files um, are already in there um, since pretty much since the beginning, um, mm -hmm. so you can import them as well. And actually, when you go to the, um, let me just maybe show that one more time on my Ruby sure. here. When I go to Ruby and go to the input functionality here on the manager, also on the design screen. This dialog opens, and we know that um, dialog here um, in the Windows boxes where we see actually all the different file types um, Ruby can currently import. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I have a question. We, whenever we forget it, um, we can just go to the import um, function and just look it up. Oops. Nice. Well, I have okay. two questions. One from Natalie. Very simple question. Uh, is there a tutorial on how to use Rotary with Ruby software? Ooh, good one. If there is, it's probably from HQ right now, but I think we will do a video on the, the usability of the new 3D Rotary on Ruby, which is amazing. By the way, yesterday I was doing some training with people here, and I used the 3D Rotary, and it was so easy. It was so easy. I had... I didn't even need to think about anything besides using the digital caliper to measure the diameter of the, the glass cup. And that was it. Mm -hmm. I, I could see everything in front of me, which is vastly different than it was in job control. So yes, definitely. It will be a quick video. It's really, really easy to use. And like everything in Ruby is really easy. That's, that's one of the things that got me so excited since the beginning. You know, job control, you have the interface is quite simple as well. But if you need to do anything extra, you, you you don't have much information what is what, right? But Ruby is out there and really simple to use. So yeah, Natalie, we will do a video, but does HQ have a video on that, uh, Alex, already? There's actually there's actually a pretty good um, video also from Laser Dave. We did during the, the webinar for the launch of Ruby 2.0. Um, so it is very well explained there. Um, and we are actually working on some more um, tutorials here as well at HQ um, that go then into more more advanced modes. Um, mm -hmm. so to say. Yep. Now I will um, really quick for your second okay. question. I will I will just really quick um, I will find the URL for that video and I'll post it in the chat here so you guys can yep. you guys can go also, ahead. Please go ahead. Now Sorry. I have a question that's prob probably one of the most asked questions to me when I'm training people is is Ruby going to be an is like is it going to come in an installation package for mac and when at least uh it how long in the roadmap is that coming ruby for Macs mm -hmm. is in directly direct connection from mac to machine no need mm -hmm. to go through windows mm -hmm. well um unfortunately that's at the moment not on our roadmap to do really mm -hmm. an installation package directly for mm -hmm. a mac um, so right now, um, with all the um, existing um, machines, we always, mm -hmm. you know, um, you don't actually need a, a full-blown uh, Windows, uh, Windows, Windows mm -hmm. computer, a notebook or whatever. It could actually just be more or less any kind of pocket computer um, where you just have Ruby running, um, mm -hmm. which you basically use as a kind of server then. Um, and especially with, with really our run on Ruby machines, where really Ruby is the operating system, you don't have that need at all anymore because really the laser itself is already coming with everything you need. And there That's you don't need ask. to have 
that additionally somewhere um, you can just directly use your Mac PC then natively. So if your machine has run in Ruby, you can literally just have your uh, MacBook Air, whatever, and you will be able to connect directly to the machine. No need to get another PC, correct? That part is so exactly. Cool. There we go, guys. Um, quick question here from Mark, and I think it's a I think it's a good one. Um, this is sort of again in relation to importing of files, but does it matter which version of Corel, let's say for example, you're using, and if the file has multiple pages that you're importing, will you get? Is it able to import all the separate pages, or just the first, or or will you get separate designs for each one? I mean, how does uh, how does Ruby interpolate the the mm -hmm. you know, multiple page mm -hmm. file? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, currently at the moment, it's actually just um, importing the first one um, as a single one, um, and the other ones would be ignored. Um, but that's uh, something we are just working on at the moment as well um, to import then multiple pages as well. Mm. Cool. Awesome. I I have a, a question from Memories Mate. Does Ruby replace AI or Corel? I'll have an answer for that, and I'll I want you to answer as well, Alex. So give me your opinion. As of now, in my opinion, as a person that uses Illustrator for like eight years, I don't think so. It's not going to replace at least as of now. I think Ruby is a like once you design something, and you design something just you know as in a digital space. And then you have to transform that to work on a laser. It takes a certain amount of time. Ruby kind of cuts that time by like a tenth, at least for me. You know, so now I know that I can design up to a certain point and be like, okay, the, the design itself, the idea is made. I can put this in Ruby and take maybe 30 seconds to make sure that this is going to work. You know, I can do quick fixes, change sizes, you know, rotate, all of that in Ruby. I don't need to do that in Illustrator or Photoshop, you know, and take five, 10 minutes to do one file. I do that all on Ruby. So to me, Ruby is a complement to the design softwares, right? You can vastly improve your production time, you know, your handling of the files before you start your production. So that's for me what Ruby is. Alex? Yep. Well, <laughs> we're well explained. It's, yeah. it's uh, tough, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, well, well explained, uh, Miguel. Um, so my answer would also be definitely not, um, because I mean, looking at, at Corel Draw, or Illustrator, um, I mean, there is a different purpose for those programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. they are originally not made um, for laser operators for laser usage. Yeah, they are coming from 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 a different background, and we definitely don't have the aim to really create our own Corel Draw Illustrator. Um, but um, as you just said, we really want to provide those tools um, for laser users they need um, for their daily work and for their daily life and to exactly um, increase the productivity and to cut um, the time needed from really idea to finished product by half at least um, and to make everything more efficient and, and really overall seamless. Um, and also one of the things we had um, already today um, discussed is also then no need to open something in a different um, program additionally or so, and then send it over by a printer driver, just drag and drop it into Ruby and you have everything in there you need. Um, and if you need then more sophisticated, more advanced um, graphical functionalities, we will always have those um, packages um, still there. Um, mm -hmm. If needed, I have a, a little bit of like, I think we only have time for three more questions, but I have a very specific question uh, because Jazer Laser Working uh, asked about the rotary tool, and some of the people are having a similar issue. But I was running the rotary yesterday, so I'm going to put it out there and you uh, help me out. I think Ruby, the, the 3D rotary, reads a little bit different than Job Control. Job control has the the zero part on top and the 360 on like on the bottom, right? Ruby reads from the middle. Am I right about that? Like it's always reading from the middle. It doesn't move the uh, let's say the laser pointer to the zero point or to the bottom point. It, it's always in the center, isn't it right? So exactly, it's always relative to where where the laser pointer is at the moment. Um, but um, there is there are some use cases where you actually mm -hmm. would need um, the Y um, mm -hmm. the Y position as well the Y coordinates as mm -hmm. well and we have that on our on our table already and we we are already working on this topic as well to then cover those use cases as well. 
Mm -hmm. So f from where I saw yesterday and what I did was I moved the object, right? Uh, most of the time you would move the design, you would like increase the, the, the rotation of everything. But once I realized the, the, the laser point is in the middle, I just put the laser point where I wanted, you know, like I moved up, I know the zero would be there. And then I moved the cup to the center. So I know that this will be the center and I have a space enough to engrave to either side. And it worked perfectly. So I think uh, is not an actual issue, guys, that you guys are asking about the rotary. There's more of an application that differs a little bit from job control, right? Before you would reference yourself from the laser pointer, and now you have to re uh, reference yourself from the red line. That's basically it. Where the light, red line stands, your engraving will go either side, you know? That's a good way to explain it. Um, one quick one here from TAC that I think, uh, you covered off Alex, but just to, um, does the new version of Ruby support multiple passes in the stamp mode? Um, I assume that yes, it would just be, you would set that in your, in your settings ahead of sending the job to the laser. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Pardon? Yeah. No, 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 no I, I just, I, just, <laughs> just well, excited. General, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm way too excited <laughs> about this, you know? Me too. <laughs> With the material effects, you can always add um, as many effects um, as you want, actually, and then have as many passes as you want. But also, of course, multiple passes per effect um, is definitely possible as well, yeah. Awesome. Um, Miguel, do you have uh, one more, maybe? You want to throw the last one? Yes, let me see here. Um... There's a lot of great questions, guys. And again, we will do our best to answer some of these two in the, in the YouTube comments if we can. <laughs> um, give us a bit so, of time to get this up on the on the site, but, but we'll do we'll absolutely do our best. I think I'm gonna end up with an easy question. Yes. So, is there a way to assign different colors material settings for all the same run? I have tried. I have to assign and assign each color individually and rerun several times. So there, there are two questions in there. I don't know if you if you saw how you you phrased your own question, but it's two questions, not just one. Because for the first part of your question, the answer is simply yes. You can assign, you know, a material with different colors and different settings as much as you want. You know, different types of engraving. Uh, for the second part, it feels like you're asking about if you can add different types of material settings for one job. And the answer is around no, because you have to choose one material setting that you can then edit the way that you want, right? So you're talking about, I have tried and have to assign and assign each color individually and run several times. In your case, if I understand correctly, you should create two or three types of materials and each one of them have the sets of colors that you want and the types of settings that you want. So you can change them in the, the uh, production area of Ruby with one click, you know, from mature one to mature two to mature three, they will be the ones that you will actually want to run. And correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. <laughs> If that's no, exactly. what I figured out from, from this. Exactly. I th so, yeah. I think. Uh, and I, I think, think we, that's, yeah, this is the longest afraid, yeah. running webinar we ever had. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to post one more link here in the chat. Um, this is, uh, we had someone ask, uh, let me see here. I believe it was Denise. Um, was it not Denise? Let me see. Well, Regardless to whoever, whatever talented and awesome person it was, memories made. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, that is the link to the uh, the Launch Basics webinar that we did with Alex and Alex, the one that Miguel recommended. So um, Alex and we Alex, have the, yeah. the link to the uh, yeah. It's I mean it's you got it's the best. <laughs> um, we uh, we have the link to the Laser Dave Rotary video in here. Uh, I would highly recommend checking out some of the great, as I said, content that. Miguel and, and all of the other Chartech subsidiaries around the world have put up. Even some of our users have put some great tutorials on YouTube. I mean, feel free to, to dig in there and, and uh, check out some of the great stuff. Um, as a quick reminder, too, for the future, uh, this really is community driven. So I'll refer you guys back to the page on Ruby on our website. Submit your ideas, submit your comments. We always want to hear good, the bad, the ugly, everything that's going on with Ruby. We want to hear what you guys want to see coming from the laser software in the future. Um, Miguel, Alex, any final thoughts? Anything you'd like to, to throw in there before we head out? Um, I, I'm going to leave oh, Alex to, to finish it, but for me, yeah. guys, if you did not start using Ruby yet, give it a shot, you know, give it a shot. 
is I'm, I'm not gonna say just as much better than job control but you will see the freedom it allows you to create and, and fix files and eventually maybe in the same day that you start using you realize how much quicker you can do some stuff you know and how easy it is so give it a shot i know i know it could look uh scary at first to change softwares you know you've been producing the same software for years you know and, and it's a new software who knows if it's actually working but one does not locks you out of the other Invalidate so you can the install other. ruby yeah. use it yeah test it and you know if you don't like it you can use drive control but i doubt you would not like ruby i think i think we can safely say that you know we're not going to say it's way better than job control we might say that we like it way better um True. But, you know, I wouldn't be lying if I said that I still have a place in my heart for job control, but Ruby is like, ah, there's just, I think, Miguel, I think you hit it in a really great way earlier in the stream where I think there's just something about the design of Ruby that's just so friendly that mm -hmm. for whatever reason, um, I, I find that Ruby works in the way I expect it to work. And that mm -hmm. is such a, a refreshing thing when I think lasers in general can already be sort of intimidating sometimes, if, especially if you're new oh, yeah. to it. So, oh, yeah. you know. Alex, so how Alex. About yourself, sir? <laughs> well, very, very well said. Um, there's not, there's not much to add, to be honest. Uh, um, I'm really honored and pleased um, at, to have the chance um, to be here um, at those sessions um, and to show you um, how Ruby is going to make our, our life easier. And I'm absolutely convinced of that. Um, and um, definitely also as we have seen the progress over the last months already. Um, so this will continue um, this path um, and there's a lot more to come. We've seen the roadmap. Um, and well, please, 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 please um, share your feedback with us, share your insights, your ideas with us um, because we really need you and need all the, the inputs and the feedback. Um, and together I think um, then Ruby will help us in our daily work and really make make our lives easier, um, more productive and um, better than overall. Couldn't have said it better. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Uh, always appreciate your time. Um, everyone watching, whether it's uh, now live or in the future on YouTube, uh, thank you for taking the time. We always really appreciate it. Again, uh, if you ever encounter any issues with, uh, with Ruby, uh, you can always reach out to the TS in your local country. Obviously, we're always excited to hear from you guys. Again, good, bad, and different, whatever. Um, we'd love to hear your ideas. And uh, I think, you know, with that, um, you know, we're so excited to have done this. Alex, thank you again so much for joining us. We will see you guys again next time.